Okay, Bismillah. Um, I, okay, if I can't. Um, I was raised as a Christian, a Church of England. Um, when I was younger, I attended Sunday school um, and brownies and girl guides, that sort of thing. But my parents wasn't very religious. I had always believed there was a God, always. There was no doubt there. Um, but I needed to understand what the Bible was saying. And in church, I just found that nothing made sense. It was all very confusing. I could not understand the Trinity at all. Um, it, it, was, it was just too much, too strange, too weird, not realistic. Nothing added up. Um, whenever I asked questions, they could never be answered. Um, I found the priest would just go around my questions. He wouldn't ask, answer them directly. Um, then I became a teenager and you know, left guides and church and did all, all the things that teenagers tend to do. Um, and then after, um, I suppose, living quite a life and seeing many things, experiencing many things, I actually came to that all-time question of what's the purpose in life? What's the purpose of life? Um, I was 22 years of age and I just thought to myself, where am I going? What is this all for? What am I doing with my life? I know God has made me, but why has he made me? I'm sure it's not to live a life like this. I'm sure there has to be a purpose for it. Um, when I was in uh, high school and college, uh, I had a lot of Muslim friends. Um, don't know any of them who are practicing mind, but I did learn a little bit about Islam from them. So I knew the answers one in Christianity. Um, then I asked someone for a book uh, about Islam because like I said, I, I learned a little bit about it and wanted to know some more. SubhanAllah, this book was a very basic book. Um, it it kind of covered every topic, you know, from uh, the Quran, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even all the way to economics in Islam. You know, it covered everything, but just basic on each topic. Um, I think I read about six pages of this book and I got to the part of where the Quran as um, Allah made a promise that he would protect the Quran, um, that it was just confirming all what had come before and you know after 1400 years or more than that um, it's not been altered or changed in any way and that there was miracles in the Quran and you know from that you just you just know that that is the true words of god unlike the bible which has been written by i don't know how many men <laughs> you know being passed back and forth between kings and the church and you know so at that point after just six pages of reading this book i took my shahada um i just did it by myself i was at home it was, it was one night I went to bed and I just thought I have to become a Muslim, I have to do it now. Still not knowing too much about Islam but I just knew from the Quran that it was the right religion, it was the true religion. Um, so yeah, I, I took my Shahada <laughs> and it was quite funny because the next day um, I was walking through the town centre and I saw a, a Muslim guy from that I knew from college and there I am screaming across the road calling him <laughs> you know so an Islamic <laughs> um, but hey I've been Muslim for one day so I, I'm screaming over saying hey hey I've, I've just become a Muslim well I think I have and I, I told him you know what I had read and what I said to become Muslim and he said yeah you're Muslim so the, the guy took my number but don't panic what done? He just passed it on to a sister that he knew, and next couple of days I got a call. Was taught Surah Ikhlas, and 
I've never looked back. <laughs> so um, I started attending Halikas then, and um, gosh, it's been 11 years now, and I'm now running Halikas myself. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's my story. Any questions, please? I I love questions. So. And then I give up the mic now. Jazakallah for being patient. Okay, uh, Omar, stay on the record. Inshallah, the sister will take the mic. Inshallah. Now, sister, would you like to tell us that uh, what's the thing that um, that you found in the Quran that was uh, answers to your questions? Um, some of the things that always had you had. Uh, and you couldn't uh, really find the answer in in, 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 in the Bible. And uh, the second question is, how was your conversion uh, been taken by your family, inshallah? Thank you. Okay. Um, obviously, I was I was nervous, uh, very nervous the first time. Was was my mic okay? The volume's all right and everything. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, okay. First question. Um, the answers. Oh. Okay. Um, sorry, that just threw me off. Um, yeah. Answers. Thank you. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, may Allah guide you. Um, yeah. I gotta stop looking to the left now. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's just really thrown me off. Uh, answers, answers. Yeah, the, the hardest thing, it, w it was the whole Trinity thing, Jesus being the Son of God and the God. And so, you know, straight away, just learning that he was a prophet, you know, and that was it. It was just easy. It just, the whole thing about Islam makes sense nothing makes you feel like oh wow that's confusing i don't understand that well, that just don't sound right everything sounds and feels right um i don't i don't really know if there's much more i can say about that um and as far as my conversion <laughs> goes um <laughs> my mum wasn't too concerned when i first told her she just I don't think she really paid that much attention. She didn't think much into it. Um, and my dad, he sort of laughed it off and said, oh, another one of your phases. In three weeks, you'll be calling yourself a Buddha. I said, no, dad is Buddhist. <laughs> they worship Buddha. But anyway, um, it wasn't until I started covering that that was the problem with them when I started wearing full hijab. Um <laughs> yeah. Do you think there is a difference between Christian? Okay. Um, yeah. So, so the the whole thing was about me covering. I mean, God, my, it, it's it's awful to think that your father would prefer you to walk around half naked than to cover up and be protected. You wore hijab right after. No, no, I, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I read a couple of pages about Islam and took my shahada. So, you know, some people, they learn about Islam and then they take their shahada. But I just knew it was the truth from the start. So, you know, inshallah, may Allah forgive me for not doing everything straight away. I mean, you know, he knows what we're capable of and what our intentions are. And you know, he's guided me, alhamdulillah, so, um, it, it was a, the hijab was a difficult thing in the beginning, I must be honest, but it was kind of like, um, a slow transition, um, first it went to longer clothing, then it went to looser clothing, and then it, it went from a see-through hijab to a, a you know, a, a thicker hijab, but it was, little bit of hair coming out and you know it's, it was bit by bit um uh, now it, it's my second skin so <laughs> alhamdulillah um yeah but uh, go, going back to my dad subhanallah he emigrated and i think he realized that 
this sort of thing didn't matter because when he was in the, uh, the same country as myself, um, we would be together and I could see he cringed when he saw people he knew because he was embarrassed about the way I looked. But subhanAllah, when I went abroad to visit my dad, everyone he saw, he was calling them over, he had his arm around me, he's going, this is my daughter, and he just seemed like that proud father again, and it was wonderful, because, I mean, the country he's in, you know, there's a lot of tourists, and you you can imagine, it's the typical holiday resort, so for him not to feel uncomfortable with me being in a place like that, a really hot country, being covered from head to toe, it was wonderful, it was really nice, so, you know, for anyone who's um, having problems with their family, you know, be patient, Allah rewards the patient one, so, um, yeah, that's it. Okay, and uh, I have a, another question, now that was with the family. Now, we, for you to be Muslim, to become Muslim, I'm sure that uh, the environment outside was a different story. Now, how did your friends and uh, your work or, or the society, how did you uh, deal with it? And how there was, well, did you feel that you were treated differently? Did, uh, did you have to lose some of your friends? And uh, from the other side of the Muslim uh, community, how did you did you find a new environment? Uh, where you, did you feel did you feel uh, that you uh, were not welcome, or did you have some hardship dealing with the new Muslims? So from both sides, I would like you to tell me that um, since when you became Muslim, what was the hardship that you in, encountered from both sides? Thank you. Okay, um, first of all, with my own friends, uh, with my non-Muslim friends, they took it really well, but I kind of, the, the deeper I got into Islam, I just distanced, distanced myself away from them anyway, because, you know, they were still into the the nightclub and scene and all that, so all that had to stop immediately. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of, um, the friendships fizzled out very quickly it was it wasn't difficult really and I still see some of my old friends in passing and they don't treat me any differently alhamdulillah um, you know whenever I see them I try to give dawah so um, they still don't try to avoid me so that's really good um, with my non-muslim friends I mean they were just shocked really really shocked even though a lot of them were not practicing themselves um, they knew what I was like before so for me to convert to Islam they were really surprised but they were very um, I don't want to use the word proud they were um, sorry my mind's gone blank um, not impressed. <laughs> Help me out. Um, <laughs> yeah, ecstatic. No, they were—they were just—they were fascinated. I think um, they never come across reverts <laughs> before. Um, they, they were really surprised that um, I did convert, and it was kind of. A lot of them have said you know through through the years with me being more and more practicing as time goes by um, some have said that I've been an inspiration to them and it's made them think and so that's a really good outcome of it um, I've forgotten what else you asked um, oh I I mean I, I live in um, town that's just become a city I suppose it's not very big um, there's quite a good a, a large community of Muslims here but when I became a Muslim there was no community there was no unity amongst the Muslims they were all in their own little groups you had the Bengali group Pakistani group Somali group and the women were uh, not very active so I started going to a nearer, uh, a, a near city that was a bit bigger, 
more Muslims and mashallah it is the whole Muslim community there is like a family unit with every single mosque being a family mashallah I I love it so um, for me to go there there was many reverts from all different walks of life different nationalities and so um, I, it was easy for me to be accepted there as well where is that okay it's in Cardiff in Wales does anybody know where that is Um, influence. Do you know, when when I was in college with my Muslim friends, the only thing they did was fast in Ramadan. I mean, that that was the only thing. The girls didn't cover. The guys and girls were all dating each other. Um, I didn't know anybody who went off to go and pray. <laughs> uh, so whether they had an influence on me, Subhanallah, they they. They put the drop in the cut. They, you know, I knew about Islam because of them. Um, but that's about it. I mean, I, I got told all the stories of jinns and things like that. <laughs> and walking over the hellfire when you die. <laughs> that's all they taught me. So. Oh, mashallah, sister Um Tahira, and uh, that was very interesting. How did you accept Islam? Subhanallah, you uh, you didn't. It wasn't hard for you. Uh, you know, you were that that kind of uh, person that basically they were looking for the truth and they just embraced it. You know, they didn't have to really, you know, make it hard for themselves, and that's a good thing. And uh, Subhanallah, I uh, this is something really uh, amazing. How many people they became Muslim as a choice, which is very good in, uh, uh, you know, uh, your tr uh, not as uh, an influence, and that was your choice. And uh, uh, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, لا إكراه في الدين. There is no compulsion in it, in, in religion, and uh, so uh, when you choose to become Muslim, Alhamdulillah, you did so. Um, Alhamdulillah, did you travel? Did you have any trips? Um, did you um, uh, did you learn some? Did you have any special uh, programs, education? Uh, can you tell us, like, uh, uh, during the time of, uh, since you became Muslim, uh, what was you, uh, what things that really happened uh, uh, to you, and what what sort of uh, interesting experiences uh, in in you know uh, in Islam? Thank you. Salamo, I think I have a sneaky feeling that you don't like me, man. I'm not, you know, in ways I'm not very lovable, but... Okay, sister. Sorry, uh, Chris. We are taking. We are having a conversation with somebody. So please just wait until we give you. We'll let you take the, the mic. So don't take the mic until we we'll let you know. Sister Um Tahira, I would like. Uh, um Tahira, um, uh, was our, my question was um, when you, uh, during the time of uh, if you become a Muslim, what was the int most interesting things that happened to you? And uh, you know, uh, did you travel? Uh, did you go to any any places? Um, 
did you uh, uh, have anything interesting uh, or you just have that you still you know in the same place you know nothing changed uh, okay can you hear me inshallah or my my voice is uh, too low am I low I got disturbed phone number <laughs> subhanallah let me just make it better okay okay uh, so um, Tahira uh, you want to take the mic now uh, okay Jazakallah um, yeah like I said when I first became Muslim um, I started attending mosque uh, regular halakas um, so I was learning from that and uh, you know, buying endless amount of books and listening to the Islam channel and uh, being passed on um, good reliable um, websites so you know I've always been learning um, as I've been a Muslim and now at the moment um, I do a lot of voluntary work a lot of charity fundraising um, I'm and I'm actually part of a DAWA organization um, it's kind of been running for just um, for, on the brother side it's been running for two years on um, with the sisters now joined that it's been a year for the sisters so we kind of organize um, conferences lectures and uh, weekend courses and um, we just did our first um, a couple of weeks ago we had uh, Sheikh Hatham Al Hidad come and mashallah that was really good um, we got um, a launch in a different city uh, one second um, we're launching in a different city in March so we got many things um, coming up so I'm quite active in giving dawa um, and like I said, I run Halikas now myself in, in my own town. Um, and Alhamdulillah, yes, I have brought other people to Islam as well. Um, my cousin, um, she asked me about Islam and I gave her books and we sat and talked and then I took her to the mosque where she took a shahada. Um, I had someone I had someone uh, refer um, someone who was interested in Islam to me. Um, I invited her for tea, talked a bit to her, gave her book. She went away and texted me and said, "I've taken my shahada." Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there's there's been a couple of people. Alhamdulillah, my brother is one of them, but Subhanallah, I, I don't know what's going on there. To be honest, I think when I speak to him. Um, I, th I think he just feels that I'm nagging him. I don't know. I can give dawa to strangers, but when it comes to my brother, he, he, when I first became Muslim, I think I spent the first two years just telling him he had to save himself from hell. <laughs> I, I totally went around it the wrong way. Uh, I should have told him about the beauty of Islam first. <laughs> um, so he took Shahada and then that was it he didn't do anything else he didn't learn anything um, and then he came out of Islam then he emigrated for a bit and he got into um, the church uh, oh, what were they called you know you know the people who talk in tongues and um, and they do the alpha course he was getting into that and he just thought it was I mm, can't think of a word without being disrespectful. Um, he thought it was mad anyway. And he started to remember things that I told him about Islam. So he would leave the church and go home and spend the whole night on the internet looking up on Islamic websites. And then he actually took the Shahada again. And he's since moved back, but still he's like not doing anything in terms of practicing or learning. So. I don't know what to do there.
السلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, we have uh, inshallah heard to is there is there some sound please brother السلام عليكم I have uh, told I have a question for the sister uh, Tahira and uh, at first we at first we uh, we welcome uh, sister tahira in the islam and uh, we are very proud uh, to have a sister uh, like tahira in the islam and we say uh, to her welcome to one milliard and all of uh, brothers and sisters in the world and uh, we will inshallah all uh, support you and uh, and be with every uh, new muslim the question uh, which i want inshallah to, uh, to ask you is uh, you know uh, that you are now uh, living in the islam and you you are uh, discovered uh, the beauty of the islam and you are uh, discovered the truth and uh, the truth uh, needs to be practiced and uh, you are inshallah doing your best to practice the islam and uh, according to your experience uh, because you lived in the in in the two situation uh, before the islam and after the islam and how did you live before the islam and how your life uh, is changed now according to your experience uh, what we can do uh, or what we must do uh, the muslims to uh, to give uh, to give over the message of the islam to know uh, to uh, no Muslims so uh, what's according to you uh, the best uh, the best ways ways to uh, to to pass the message to no uh, to uh, no Muslims because you uh, you 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 know how you thought uh, because you are Muslim and how now completely that I think the Islam uh, is the only way is the only way to, uh, to change the life is 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 the Islam. Is, uh, even though the even though the the, the Muslims who not are practicing, uh, when they became to practice, uh, them life uh, the life changes all. And uh, and for for somebody who did not was a Mus who not was a Muslim, it's it's more than that. So according to to you. Uh, maybe you can advise us of maybe you can work with the Muslims together to uh, uh, to, to to learn them what what the the best way is to uh, to give the message over to uh, to others thank you okay um yeah, like you said, I've I've seen both sides of the fence. I've lived my life one way, and I'm now living it the other. And I think, you know, when it comes to giving dawah to non-Muslims, there's no point in first going at them saying, can you not see that what you're doing is wrong? You know, in, in the way that they're living their life, whether it's alcohol, partying, uh, relationships drugs you know because in all of this way of living shaitan is there right and you will be completely blind and deaf to what people are saying to you and unless you're at the point like I was where I was ready to listen and ready to learn you know I, I had had enough of living that kind of life and I, I just knew there was more to it so Alhamdulillah Allah guided me without anyone around me telling me to to that point but you know if you go up to a person who is 
right in the middle of living a life like that, it, they will not hear what you're saying if you're saying that what they're doing is wrong. You know, in, in nearly everything that people are doing, there's music. And, you know, this is the tool that Shaitan uses. As long as there's music playing, you will not hear anything else. So it's the same when you're watching TV, you know, the music is there and you are distracted from life. And before you know it, life has passed you by. So when it comes to giving dawah to non-Muslims who are kind of in that lifestyle, you know, you just have to first start with the belief in Allah. Make sure that uh, you you let them know about Allah, see what um, their opinions are on that. And as long as that they they are aware that there is a creator, then you can move on. Every individual is different. You know, you, you have to figure out, um, you have to discover what each person knows themselves first. Um, you know, maybe it could, you know, there's different things that get different people. You could just go along the lines of how hey, you know, we actually believe in the same prophets as Christians, you know, from Adam, Noah, Musa, Harun, Ibrahim, you, you know, and when you tell people that, they're so shocked. So, because people think that Islam is an alien religion. They think Allah is somebody totally different to God. And they're very surprised when you say, do you know, when you pray to God and when we pray, we're actually praying to the same being. <laughs> you know, they're like, but I thought you were praying to Allah. It's like, yeah, Allah, that's just, you know, it's just what we call him. Christians in the Arab world call him Allah. You know, it's the same, it's the creator, the, the one being who created all of us and all of this. So that gets them thinking then. And then you just have to let them know that, look, it's not a different religion. It's just that we believe in all the texts that were sent, you know, from um, scrolls of Ibrahim, Psalms of David, you know, the Zabur, the Injil, the Torah. Um, but we don't have it today. It's lost or been distorted, you know. And, and well the Bible if, if you just explain to someone with the Bible how many times it's been rewritten how many different versions there are who actually wrote the Bible you know one minute is in the hands of the church then it's in the hands of the king he wanted to rule this way and that way so he changed all the words to suit him then it went back into the hands of the church again and they changed things and so on and so on and so on so it's all about educating the people not telling them, look, what you're doing is wrong, you have to be doing it like this. Because nobody wants to be told that they're wrong. So it, it's really all down to education. Subhanallah, Jazakallah, khair sister. So basically, so basically, uh, Barakallah, Fikh my Allah, he warned it. The sister is saying, Subhanallah, that, and it's true that, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, people who do not know nothing about Islam, and uh, a lot of people need more patience. And uh, basically, as Muslims, as we Muslims living in the West, we should understand this issue. And we should not think that uh, everyone that uh, that not Muslim supposed to know everything about us and about our religion. So it's a hard task, you know, to uh, to uh, for us as Muslims uh, when it comes to dealing with non-Muslims. And that's why I tell a lot of people that you know, um, knowing a little bit of knowledge about Islam and uh, knowing how to deal with non-Muslims is uh, something very important that we cannot. Um, you know, think that uh, everyone just uh, has to listen, has to understand, and has to accept, uh, or or we think that uh, it's, uh, the, on the other hand, we think that uh, it's going to be an impossible for uh, a person, uh, you know, to become Muslim, or to, to, you know, to follow the religion of Islam, because as we know in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you know, he guide whom ever he wants, so he didn't specify. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't specify what race and what religion and what area. So Allah guide guide whoever he wants. Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah sister that Allah guide you to Islam. Um, I think you have uh, really covered up a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things, you know, and 
to, if you have any advice for Muslims, um, or do you have anything to uh, to tell Muslims? And and uh, if you if you if you want to add anything, you can just uh, uh, you know press one. Uh, did does anyone here have a question for Sister Um Tahir? Inshallah, uh, you know. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, that was very interesting. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for, for, for the for the for the da'wah that you did, uh, the da'wah that you did to you to you to your brother, to your cousin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and alhamdulillah you're still struggle uh, you're still really doing a lot of uh, of, uh, of activities, you know, and you know and striving hard, you know, going out of your way, traveling to other places, get in touch with, with brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah. You know, uh, doing what a Muslim supposed to do. If you come to the West, if you come to the United States, um, Muslims do not, are not doing what they're supposed to do. Instead of uh, trying to share the religion, they're busy, you know, uh, talking about how much money did you make, or talking about uh, buying houses and basically uh, saving money. So the the issue of uh, spreading Islam. Uh, it's not a primary, you know, reason they came to the United States, and unfortunately, uh, this is a big problem. Uh, not even in America, I'm sure that even in other countries, people still have the same idea that we go for a better life, and somehow, some, some, sometimes you think that, you know, that, um, you know, uh, who's going to spread the religion of Islam? Who's gonna, who's going to talk about Islam? But alhamdulillah, when we have, when we hear people like you, sister. Uh, like you sister and I, we hear stories of other brothers and sisters from from uh, Australia, from United Kingdom, from 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 United States, from Canada. You know, Subhanallah. When we hear these kind of stories, we say Alhamdulillah. When Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said that He will bring other people, that He is is true. So you you see how how Allah works His way that. Subhanallah, Allah uh, choose other people, and if somebody refuse, you know, if somebody refuse or is not interested in spreading the religion of Islam, or reject the religion of Islam, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bring somebody else, and it will uh, that will love Islam and love the religion and spread the truth. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, kingdom, <laughs> I would like to ask uh, if anyone here are had to work onto the room. Is there any re is there anybody here that uh, interested? In, uh, if anyone here uh, became Muslim in revert, or someone have a question about Islam, uh, I don't know for that. Uh, Arbahado, Arbahado, I think he is Muslim. I'm not sure, but there's a lot of reverts in our kingdom. Loads of reverts. Mm, really? <laughs> okay, we we'll talk like a British accent. You know, yes, it is. And even in the United States of America. Even here in America, there is a, um, a big, big, uh, uh, you know, da'wah program, and ma a lot of people are becoming Muslim. Matter of fact, in Ramadan, we had a, a young, young gentleman um, came and uh, decided to embrace the religion of Islam on his own. Um, we thought that he was, he was just uh, being told by someone to come to embrace Islam. But after after questions, we find we found out. That uh, that he um, he 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 had uh, spent time uh, reading about Quran and about about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He was in touch with other Muslim brothers and sisters, and he was really um, you know aware of what he was doing. So alhamdulillah, he came and subhanallah, he uh, he did Ramadan with us and he took his shahada and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, you know uh, enlighten his heart. And guide him to, to the true religion, you know, and guide him to more in the religion. Alhamdulillah. Sometimes I'm the same way. Okay, I uh, Alhamdulillah. So I think Omar, I think we covered everything. If you want to stop, inshallah, you can. I think the sister already have covered uh, covered all of the questions. Um, thank you, sister. Thank you very much. And please, you know, uh, uh, please keep coming here. Keep coming to the room and share with us and help us. And you know, don't just. Uh, you know, disappear. We need you. I know you're you're very busy, Alhamdulillah. And uh, I don't want this to be your prime, you know, uh, station uh, because you're already doing a lot of stuff. And mashallah, you just said that you got you want to open up uh, a school. Uh, <laughs> Subhanallah. Yes, inshallah, inshallah, and uh, and you have four kids. 
and you go to Halaqa, you go to Islamic programs, you are uh, you are you are thinking of uh, open up opening school for the Muslims. Uh, you're very busy, mashallah, mashallah, and. Uh, Alhamdulillah. We didn't want to talk. I didn't want to ask, ask a question about the family, about the family, uh, but you know. So uh, I wish I was thinking she does not want to talk about her family and stuff. But if you have a, if you have a Muslim family and if you got married to a Muslim brother and if you have children, Muslim children, mashallah, that's a very good thing. May Allah, you know, bless them and may Allah, you know, uh, protect them from harm. Uh, that's how you start to be put on DVD. Do you have any anything to to um, to add, or you 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 done? Are you done, inshallah? Okay. Um. Now I'm t uh, addressing um Tahir. Okay, alhamdulillah. I think brother Omar. I think she's done. So, mashallah, may Allah reward her. Um. We have uh, our baha to. He uh, he uh, he uh, dreams of something. Okay, I have a head. Do you have a mic, 